So here is a tweet. It's a little heady. It's called Points. Points. All people default to a one-dimensional opinion in the end. A singular, malleable point on any given question. The more points we consume and validate, the stronger that singularity. This is a microcosm of the macrocosm that points us towards single-minded groupthink. Single-minded groupthink. <laughs> Jeff, those contradictions are stacking up. I say if you want to confuse people and bend them to your whims, you want to stack contradictions and limit information. I learned that in sophistry school. It's another video on my channel, BitChute and YouTube. Definitely check that out if you want to know a little bit more about the modern religion that is institutions, academia, media, and state, and how people, uh, the methods they use, the propaganda, the psychology behind the control. So let's break it down one sentence at a time, because this, this is a fun one. Well, one of the reasons I uh, take time between the tweet and the video, why there's a seven-month gap, is for, I like to look at my content. I haven't actually seen this tweet or any of these tweets in those seven months, and it's a good way of me for me to kind of walk through my own views, walk through my own opinion from seven months ago, and uh, determine just how much of it is I still hold and is still valid, and be able to explain what I have said in the past. So that's kind of part of the reasoning behind uh, why I am going all the way back. And also, it gives me incentive and makes it more fun because I'm seeing things that surprise me that I almost don't remember writing sometimes. Um, and then once I talk it through, I, I start to remember the thought process and it gets... It gets there. So it's a challenge. And yes, if you're watching the video, you might see me uh, rambling a little bit. If I don't quite have it locked down to the level I required to write it in the first place. But we'll get there. So all people default to a one-dimensional opinion in the end. A singular malleable point on any given question. So we all do. And again... I don't think anybody here, I certainly don't, purport to be unbiased. I have positions. I have places where I, I say it's kind of a fool's errand to think in absolutes, but some people just end up getting to a position, and it's better to just have that confirmation uh, and to settle in, and it can create... You know, again, I, I, I work in a world of casual fatalism where some things can be changed and others are not malleable, and they are just set... Um, but some things in, in this world, it's, it's good to have something to lean, lean on. And some people use traditional religion. They might look to God. They might look to Allah. They might be Buddhist. Or they might have a modern religion. They might say the way to universal truth and moral virtue is just to trust the experts. That would be believing in the modern religion of institutions. Trust the experts. Now, the experts... I do say seek subject matter experts, but you don't want to get too bogged down in putting faith over reason, looking at ethos over logos. That's not what I'm advocating for here. But we do tend to come down to a one-dimensional opinion, which means it's either A or B. You either want this or you don't want this. Um, you agree or you don't agree. And that tends to be for every single topic. Every single point of every single place, you have an A-B test. You have an A-B. You have an A-B, uh, a fork in the road. At the end of the day, we're not talking on a macro level. We're talking on a micro level. You end up having that zero-one binary choice, either... You want this one or that one? And you might have a number of options to choose from. Like, it might not be that... It might not be dualistic or binary in the end. But ultimately, it comes down... It comes down to questions like this. It comes down to that single point and go, okay, well, here's where I'm not movable and here's where I'm movable. And this is a place where you, you, you develop a relatively or temporarily absolute position. 
So, all people, that means all seven plus billion of us with all of our seven plus billion perspectives, we all de default to a one-dimensional opinion, a singular malleable point. It's malleable, meaning, meaning it can change on any given question. The more points we consume and validate, the stronger that singularity. So again, that's just referring to confirmation bias. Uh, the, the more that we uh, add up points, the more, the more points we have, we start with a, a, an assumption, a presumption, and the more we take in, the more we consume, the makes, that makes that stronger. Uh, the more points we consume and validate, so we validate them, we, we, we apply them, and we say, well, okay, this, this goes along with my existing thought process. This goes, we keep on making it stronger and stronger and stronger. The more we hear that same message, either from ourselves or from somebody else, and the more we put that through our cognitive pathways, our brain pathways, the more it becomes real, the more it becomes solid and becomes our opinion, our position. Okay, you might you might be on the fence. I'm on the fence about a number of issues, but ultimately, um, it's good to have a place to rest. Okay, I I say in in the context of the the echo chambers, I say it's not good to live in an echo chamber. It's nice to vacation there, where somebody is you know applying the same opinion again and again and again, and reinforcing your viewpoint by by hitting that again and again, validating your existing assumption. But it's also good to have a place to debate, a place to um, where people can push up against your confirmation bias, they can test and challenge your cognitive dissonance, and really exercise your intellectual muscles. That's a good thing to have. I, don't, I say don't stay in an echo chamber too much, take in information from people you disagree with. Like, have people you disagree, disagree with your friends. You know, don't get mad when they disagree with you. We're all different. We all have our own values. We all have our own, you know, our own window on reality. So that it's natural for us to have disagreements. And they may be rational, irrational. I might be wrong. I might be right. You might be wrong. You might be right. We might all, we might all be wrong. <laughs> Who knows? We might all be right. There's so many different ways it can go. But the point is that, you know, the more that we consume and validate, uh... On that line, the more that we continue, the stronger that singularity gets. And this is a microcosm of the macrocosm that points us towards single-minded groupthink. So, yeah, ultimately it can go for a larger idea. An ideology, if it were, it can go for, if you keep on repeating the same ideological messaging over and over again, people will just go, well, of course that's real. Of course that's true. Of course, uh, you know, the modern religion of social justice is the only, the best way, the only way to look at the difference between people. There are no other factors, because I've heard that messaging so many times, sometimes consciously, subconsciously, unconsciously, subliminally. You hear it again in the movies, you, you read it in books, you get it in your classroom, you get it on your social media. That message comes and comes and comes and comes. And ultimately, people start to fall into a tribe, a camp. And it becomes, you know, people look at what others are doing, and it continues and con continues to validate what we're thinking. And if everybody's saying, well, you're doing the right thing, if someone's telling you you're doing the right thing, you're on the right path. I agree with you. The experts agree with you. All these people we trust and respect agree with you. Yeah, you can fall into single-minded groupthink. A friend of mine was talking a little bit about Sam Harris recently, and I respect Sam a lot. I want to put a preface here that I respect Sam a lot. I like you, Sam Harris. Um, but some have talked about how in the world of academia that modern religion of institutions and the, tr the branch known as academia, a lot of times the same kind of opinions are repeated and repeated and repeated. It becomes a bit of a consensus in academic circles that may not match what people are doing on the outside, what they might be doing in a different frame of mind, a different frame of reference. When you're, you know, 
studying, when you're in the classroom, this, this environment, your environment, our environment, it influences, it directs how we perceive the world. Getting into a specific mindset, getting into different um, pathways towards uh, whatever goal it might be, but getting into specific kinds of systems to, you know, interpret reality. When you get into those systems, it's, again, muscle memory, but it's your cognitive muscles that get worked. It's your confirmation bias. It's your cognitive dissonance muscles that get worked, and you're able to go through and you're able to determine, like, you look at empirical evidence here, and you look at, you make a, a rationalization there, and there's some irrational and some rational, and, and you're going all the way through. But ultimately, if people are telling you, well, most people agree, 97% of people agree, the experts agree, we all agree, yeah, it, it validates, you know, and allows you to rest your mind. It allows you to rest your mind, and you just go along with the crowd. Now, this is all... I'm not telling you to do this. I'm saying this is a likelihood. We don't want to be working our brains overtime all the time. We have a lot of things to do. We have work. We have family. We have friends. We have to keep up with Netflix. Whatever it might be. People sometimes just take their positions and their opinions based on what the group is doing. Oh, you know, this is the recommended way to do it. This is the, the prescribed way. This is the way that a source that I trust says that I should do it. And I can't really fault anybody for that. But it's good to deconstruct it and talk about it. How we continually consume these points. We validate and make our, make our confirmation stronger. And uh, it's, you know... We can be, we can change that point. We can be malleable. We can look at new information. This is the real intellectual angle. We can look at new information and apply it. And if it calls into question our pre-existing assumption, our presumption, um, we can adapt. We, of course, can adapt and change our position at will. And again, though, uh, we do have a propensity, many of us, again, I'm not speaking for everybody, but just generally speaking, we do have a propensity to fall on one position and kind of at least give a little bit of an investment, you know, um, in that position. Like, you can't just be, like, flip-flopping back and forth, right? You have to settle into something eventually, and then you start to rationalize why you continue to believe that. You look at those points, and if they don't contradict, if they're not pushing, getting pushed away, and they conform, yeah, I mean, that's confirmation bias in a nutshell, if, you know, um, and cognitive dissonance, of course, is when you look at something and you sort of reject uh, the reality of the situation uh, for one reason or another. You, you look at something that contradicts your pre-existing assumption and you just push it away um, without much, much thought. Of course, there are, uh, I've done a number of videos on cognitive dissonance and confirmation bias. Um, I recently did one, can't remember the name of it, but it was confirmation bias, cognitive dissonance, and groupthink. And that's on my BitChute channel. 